I think we've got um, uh, two head-to-head -head trials that have been published, um, the Elevate RR and the Alpine trials uh, in CLL, um, and as well as the, the Aspen trial in Walden's from macroglobulinemia, um, comparing uh, next-generation BTK inhibitors, uh, 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 acalabrutinib and zanibrutinib, with a first-generation inhibitor, uh, ibrutinib. We also now have puritabrutinib, which was recently FDA-approved um, for patients with relapsed or refractory mantle cell lymphoma after two prior therapies, including uh, 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 a covalent BTK inhibitor. And this is a very interesting uh, drug, which is um, uh, which is highly uh, highly active uh, and also associated with uh, uh, favorable safety uh, risk profile. Um, uh, in general, next-generation BTK inhibitors, you know, I'd say both the non-covalent BTK inhibitor, puritabrutinib, uh, as well as the second-generation covalent BTK inhibitors appear uh, to be better tolerated than, than abrutinib. So in the head-to-head -head trials, um, uh, uh, acalabrutinib and zanubrutinib are associated with fewer cardiac adverse events, most notably atrial fibrillation. Um, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, in the case of, uh, of zanibrutinib in the Alpine trial, there was a suggestion of improved progression-free survival as well. Of course, um, it's uh, 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 we have to remember that these were different trials, that it's, uh, we really shouldn't be comparing uh, zanibrutinib and acalabrutinib across trials. Um, there were differences in the, the proportion of patients with P53 aberrant CLL. Uh, there were also differences in the number of median prior therapies. For example, the, the median number of prior therapies in the Alpine Zanibrutinib trial was two versus one. I'm sorry, was one versus two in the uh, in the Elevate RR trial. Um, and so we really should try not to compare efficacy um, between uh, acalabrutinib and zanibrutinib. Um, however, it's very clear that the second-generation BTK inhibitors are associated with favorable um, uh, safety um, compared with uh, abrutinib. Uh, and so in my practice, um, uh, I, uh, based on these data, I uh, preferentially select um, zanubrutinib or acalabrutinib um, uh, over abrutinib for approved indications. Um, the non-covalent BTK inhibitor pyrobrutinib is a, a very uh, important drug in, in, in addition to the field. Um, and, uh, 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 and in my practice, I use this in patients um, who uh, either develop progression on a covalent BTK inhibitor um, or who uh, become intolerant of a covalent BTK inhibitor and cannot be cycled to a different covalent BTK inhibitor um, uh, that they subsequently are, are, are tolerant of. For, so, for example, if somebody develops myalgias on, on uh, zanibrutinib or acalabrutinib, I will try the other covalent BTK inhibitor. Um, uh, if that's uh, uh, insufficient after appropriate dose reductions, if that's insufficient, um, and they continue to have intolerable toxicity, then I then uh, 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 for an approved indication, uh, such as mantle cell, uh, or potentially for off-label use in CLL, then pyrobrutinib is an option.